there is a new type of solar cell that actually creates hydrogen, oxygen, and heat. Hydrogen production from water using solar energy is referred to as artificial photosynthesis. But the LRESE system is unique. Why? Well, it's unique for its ability to also produce heat and oxygen at scale. So how will we use this? Well, this system will be used or could be used to provide residential and commercial central heating and hot water. And at the same time, it can power hydrogen fuel cells. If all of this is actually true, this is quite an amazing development. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who has contributed to my GoFundMe campaign this year. Really, without your support, couldn't be here doing this. I don't know what I'd be doing. Um, it's really been a crazy year, but you guys have made this year. It's You've made this year actually survivable. I don't think it would have been uh, without your support. And I truly mean that. It's 100% true. It's just, it's just a fact. So thank you so much. And thank you to our Patreon supporters. Really appreciate your support. Also, thank you so much to our YouTube members. By the way, if you want to be a member, you do get access to some of our videos in advance usually around three or four days before they're published on the main site. A parabolic dish on the EPFL campus is easily overlooked. It resembles a satellite dish or other telecommunications infrastructure. But this dish is special. It's different. Why? Because it works like an artificial tree. After concentrating solar radiation nearly 1,000 times, a reactor above the dish uses that sunlight to convert water into valuable and renewable hydrogen, oxygen, and heat. I mean, it's basically one thing creating three different things that human civilization needs. Sophia Horsenho, head of the Laboratory of Renewable Energy Science and Engineering in the School of Engineering, started at the beginning. This is the first system level demonstration of solar hydrogen generation, she said. Unlike typical lab scale demonstrations, it includes all auxiliary devices and components. So it gives us a better idea of the energy efficiency you can expect once you consider the complete system and not just the device itself. With an output power of over two kilowatts, we've cracked the one kilowatt ceiling for our pilot reactor while maintaining record high efficiency for this large scale. The scale is key here. The scale is big and it can be repeated. The hydrogen production rate achieved in this work represents a really encouraging step towards the commercial realization of this technology, she said. The work builds on preliminary research, demonstrating the concept on the laboratory scale using LRESC's High Flux Solar Stimulator, which was published in Nature Energy all the way back in 2019. Now, though, the team has published the results of their scaled-up, efficient, and multi-product process under real-world conditions in the same journal. Hydrogen production from water using solar energy is referred to as artificial photosynthesis. But the LRESE system is unique for its ability to also produce heat and oxygen at scale. Scale is key. Without scale, nothing works. After the dish concentrates the sun's rays, water is pumped into its focus spot, where an integrated photoelectrochemical reactor is housed. Within the reactor, photoelectrical chemical cells use solar energy to electrolyze or split water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. Heat is also generated by this process, basically like free heat. But instead of being released as a system loss, the heat is passed through a heat exchanger so that it can be harnessed for ambient heating. Basically, the process is incredibly efficient because the byproducts aren't just byproducts. They're things that can be used, and they are being used. In addition to the system's primary outputs of hydrogen and heat, the oxygen molecules released by the photoelectrolysis reaction are also recovered and used. Oxygen is often perceived as a waste product, but in this case, it can also be harnessed 
for example, for medical applications. Now, the interesting thing about this is my wife is currently doing oxygen therapy and oxygen ozone treatment because it's actually really good for her health and because oxygen is known to kill cancer. Now, when I say kill cancer, I don't mean it's the cure for everything. I don't mean it's going to cure cancer. I mean, it helps to kill. It helps to cause apoptosis in the cell level. So oxygen is extremely healthy. So what this system could do is, at the same time as pumping heat into your house, which is a byproduct, it could also pump oxygen into your house, improving the oxygen flow in your house and be used as kind of a medical process. And it could be used as kind of a way of improving your health at the same time. The system is suitable for industrial, commercial and residential applications. In fact, LRESE spin-off So High Tech SA is already deploying and commercializing it right now. In fact, they're basically about to sell it to residential and commercial customers. The EPFL startup is working with a Swiss-based metal production facility to build a demonstration plant at the multi-100 kilowatt scale that will produce hydrogen for metal annealing processes, oxygen for nearby hospitals, and heat for the factory's hot water needs. Now, it's important to keep in mind that this hydrogen is not necessarily going to be used as a mainstream product here. However, hydrogen for the purpose of steel manufacturing is massive because manufacturing of steel and other and other metals in the construction industry globally contributes a massive percentage of worldwide pollution, of worldwide CO2. So High Tech co-founder and CEO Sarab Turnburn said, with the pilot a dem- with the pilot demonstration At EPFL, we have achieved a major milestone by demonstrating unprecedented efficiency at high output densities. High output power density is key here. We are now scaling up a system in an artificial garden-like setup, where each of these artificial trees is deployed in a modular fashion. This system can be used to provide residential and commercial central heating and hot water at the same time, and to power hydrogen fuel cells at an output level of about half a kilogram of solar hydrogen per day. The EPFL campus system could power around 1.5 hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. Obviously, those don't really exist yet, uh, and they probably never will. But anyhow, it could be used for other purposes, driving an average annual distance or meet up to half the electricity demand and more than half of the annual heat demand of a typical four-person Swiss household. Now, previously I'd heard about these kinds of systems in the past that would produce possibly power and heat for a home, and I didn't think they'd work. The maths didn't add up. But in this situation, it very well could. I don't know the exact numbers yet, though, because I don't know the cost of the system. So we can't really analyze it in comparison to other technologies, such as solar, batteries, and wind. With their artificial photosynthesis system well on its way to scale up, Horsener is already exploring new technological avenues. In particular, the lab is working on a large scale solar powered system that could split carbon dioxide instead of water, yielding useful materials like like syngas for liquid fuel or the green plastic precursor, ethylene. The ability to market three products at the same time, hydrogen, oxygen, oxygen, and heat, has to help the economic outlook for this technology. Now, realists will say that the test rig output on a sunny day is going to be a bit shy of 17 amps or a bit over the standard US 15 amp single circuit. And that's true. Thinking this will power a typical home is a mind stretcher because it won't really at least not yet. On the other hand, this is definitely solar progress. It goes to the triple product output. However, the press release isn't exactly clear on what that would sum up to be annually. It might be better than a simple photoelectric cell though. Even with the increased investment for the oxygen and heat handling, we don't know how much the economic benefit would be. But in theory, this all sounds pretty amazing. Now, clearly, this approach is going to need and get more recognition and more investment. Will it? I think it probably will. When the maturity gets far enough along to attract engineering and design, 
the old problems of hydrogen and oxygen in close proximity, what do they do together? Cause explosions. And heat source close by will require some significant attention. Now, the question I have though is, would you be willing to accept these risks? Because I can see a couple of explosions happening if this system has a malfunction. You have to be very careful with this triple combination, which in theory could be somewhat of a bomb. The clear problem that I have with this idea is the, the alternatives are extremely compelling. And this is a very complex concept, but I do see a possibility for this working in the future at some point in time, and possibly for commercial applications. In a commercial setting, this could be very, very cost effective, and it could make a lot of sense if this kind of system was deployed somewhere like a steel industry or a steel manufacturing plant. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments, and thank you for watching.